Hello there, thrill seekers. I received a couple of questions, and since before your sun burned hot in space and before your race was born, I have awaited a couple of questions. <laughs> I, I get that wrong. I just watched the clip uh, the other day and realized I always said uh, the sun bur before your sun burns hot in the sky, burned hot in the sky, but it's actually burned hot in space. Sorry, Harlan Ellison, wherever you are, up in uh, right or heaven or wherever you are. So. Uh, also, uh, last episode, probably nobody noticed, but I kept confusing the particle ni with the particle no. It, Dogen says no, and that's clearly what it says on the screen, and I kept saying ni uh, in that one quote that I gave you from Dogen, so sorry about that. Anyway, nobody noticed probably, but I did. So, uh, and, and my blog has new stuff on it, and my podcast has new stuff on it, so go look at those. All right, the question I got, I got two questions, kind of, that are similar questions. How much effort or concentration do we need to put in Zazen to be present? I noticed some kind of block or cramp in my head. Maybe it's a cold or too much effort in some kind of Zazen. Is relaxation an important factor? Another person sent me this quote from Hakun Ryoko Yasutani, who is the founder of the Sambo Kyodan sect of Zazen, the three, is it three jewel, three, three, oh god, I forgot what the Sambo Kyodan means. Anyway, he's the founder of that. Shikantaza is the mind of someone facing death. Let us imagine that you are engaged in a duel of swordsmanship of the kind that used to take place in ancient Japan. As you face your opponent, you are unceasingly watchful, set, ready. Were you to relax your vigilance even momentarily, you would be cut down instantly. A crowd gathers to see the fight. Since you are not blind, you see them from the corner of your eye, and since you are not deaf, you hear them. But not for an instant is your mind captured by these impressions. So that's a kind of description of Zazen, and even Shikantaza, just sitting Zazen, which is the kind of Zazen that Zogen, Dogen talks about and that I recommend, uh, that you see a lot. And people get, people, when I say people get uh, concerned about this, which I was about to say, but I didn't say. Anyway, I'm one of those people, because I read those things too when I first started doing Zazen, and I'm like, oh god, the mind of the swordsman who's, you know, facing death, and the swords are flashing all around, and the crowd is gathering, and I've got to concentrate right on this one thing, and I'm going, ah, that's the effort I gotta make, I gotta go, ah, like that, in Zazen. And I can tell you, just from my own experience, for whatever it's worth, uh, my efforts to do that really came to nothing. I couldn't sustain it very long, and I didn't know how to be like that. And all it really did was get me into this kind of mindset of, like, I'm not doing it right, I'm not doing it well enough, I've got to concentrate more in judging my zazen and going, oh, God, I'm doing the worst zazen anybody ever did because I'm not, you know, the, the swordsman facing the, the challenger with the crowd yelling and screaming or whatever that uh, image was, uh, you know, that, that, uh, that very hardcore, macho sort of uh, image, watchful, unceasingly vigilant, not letting your guard down moment even for a moment and, and, and a person facing death. My own zazen, which I do every day and I did over there in that room uh, this morning, uh, isn't like that, isn't like the person facing death and the swordsman you know, up against the opponent and all that. It's more, uh, more relaxed than that. My, my teacher used to describe zazen, this is Nishijima Roshi, as a kind of midpoint between tension and relaxation. So you don't want to just kind of sit there spacing out. You know, that, that wouldn't be good zazen. It's, you know, I, I'm using these with some hesitation, saying good zazen or bad zazen. I think any zazen that you actually do is good zazen. But you know, for the sake of this conversation, we can say good zazen or bad zazen. And it's not good zazen if you're just kind of sitting there spacing out, just turning into jello, or just kind of, you know, thinking about your taxes or what your mother-in-law said or, or, you know, ruminating or whatever. Uh, it's just spacing out and daydreaming. That isn't what you're doing in zazen, nor, I would say, are you doing what Hakuin, Hakun 
Yasutani says about the, the swordsman and you're facing death and it's a huge you know, effort of concentration. I don't think that's uh, right Zazen either. I, I think it's somewhere in the middle. If we take a look at what Dogen says in Fukan Zazengi, which is not uh, considered technically part of Shobo Genzo. Oh, I whistled when I said Shobo Genzo. Anyway, it's not technically considered Shobo Genzo, but Nishijima Roshi put it as a uh, an appendix at the end of his book one of Shobo Genzo. So if you want to find it, you can go look for that. Which is it's they're on Amazon now, uh, so you can you can get them, and uh, so. For a while, you couldn't get copies of this for love or money, but now you can. So what he describes Zazen as, he says, This sitting in Zazen is not learning Zen concentration. It is simply the peaceful and joyful gate of Dharma. It is the practice and experience which perfectly realizes the state of Bodhi, which is enlightenment. The universe is conspicuously realized, and restrictions and hindrances never reach it. To grasp this meaning is to be like a dragon that has found water, or like a tiger in its mountain stronghold. Remember, the right dharma is naturally manifesting itself before us, and darkness and distraction have dropped away already. And there is a footnote here about the Zen concentration, which says, uh, Sekimon Rinkakuroku relates how historians listed Master Bodhidharma alongside people who were learning Zen concentration, which is Shuzen in Japanese. In his commentary, this is uh, the footnote continuing, Master Dogen says, Master Bodhidharma sat in stillness facing the wall, but he was not learning Zen concentration. So that idea of, of learning Zen concentration is... I think what Yasutani is talking about here and what Dogen is refuting, that learning Zen concentration is an effort to establish a kind of one-pointed concentration. You often see this also in uh, Hindu stuff about samadhi being a one-pointed concentration. So you, you might pick an object, you might pick up, I think in Tibetan Buddhism they'll use mandalas this way. And I'm not sure what the, the Hindu sort of meditation systems use, but they'll, they'll use an object. Like a, a candle flame is a good sort of uh, stereotypical example of where you just put the candle flame and you're just trying to concentrate so your mind is totally on the candle flame or totally on the mandala and all of that. There's a bird or maybe a squirrel up on the roof here so I can hear it scratching around. So that's that's what Zazen isn't. <laughs> Zazen isn't that. So what is it? Well, I'll just give you my take on it. And you know, as somebody who's done this for, God, close to 40 odd years, right? Or 30 some years, but it's gonna be the 40th year pretty soon, I think, of, of me doing this stuff every day. So I do have a little bit of, you know, an opinion on it, possibly. It is, uh, uh, my main thing is I check my posture. This is what Nishijima Roshi always taught. And he said uh, somewhere along the line when I was listening to him in the old days that when your concentration goes wonky, you know, starts to go somewhere else, your posture will follow it. Your, the mind always or the, sorry, the body always follows the mind. So the mind will do something and get wonky and fuzzy and whatever, and the posture will start to do something. You know, in, in my case, early on, what would happen is my shoulders would slowly rise. And I only knew about this because Tim, my first Zen teacher, would do posture adjustments, and he would come down and he would push on my shoulders, like sometimes really hard, uh, because they were just so far up like this. You know, And I had a tendency to kind of walk around like this, uh, friends of mine used to make fun of my posture like they do this to make fun of my posture because that's how I looked but uh, you know I learned to open up my chest and to and to get my shoulders back and down and that was what I did these days when my thinking when my concentration if we're going to use that dirty word uh, starts to go a little bit into the fuzzy areas uh, the posture will kind of lean or, or shift. Another thing to look at is this cosmic mudra. This is the the hand position we put, the, the bottom, or sorry, the right hand on the bottom, left hand on top. If you're left-handed, sometimes left-handed people like to do it the opposite way. It doesn't really matter. The point is to make this circle where your thumb tips are touching lightly. And what tends to happen, 
not sure what Ziggy's barking at now. Oh, it's my mother-in-law. No, it's my father-in-law. That's the one he loves to bark at most. Anyway, uh, when you concentrate, when you get a little bit too dreamy, uh, or, or you're thinking too much or daydreaming too much, the, the thumbs will s tend to split apart and go up like that. I'm exaggerating, but they'll do that kind of thing. And when you're sleepy and just kind of foggy, they'll go like this. So you, you just kind of remember to hold on to that. Usually, I hold on to it kind of in my lap, so it's resting uh, right there on, on you know on my lap area and and just leave it there the the other problem with the cosmic mudra this is an aside is some people tend to try to hold it up really high and that'll make your shoulders tense so so just let it rest you know where it where it kind of naturally falls uh, in your lap so that's what i do and i don't really believe in this idea of the you know the swordsman facing the battle sort of concentration it's never worked out for me uh, frankly the the times when i have uh, sat in with groups whose uh, effort is pointed in that direction i, I often notice a, a kind of lingering tension among them and a kind of uh, what nishijima roshi would call being too sharp you know and and uh, i remember a couple of times uh, sitting in with with groups like that or, or doing lectures and the Q&A would get very weird and intense because people were always trying to kind of make a point or something you know kind of uh, like this and it, it could get uncomfortable and I don't notice that from more strictly uh, Soto type groups that don't practice that Ziggy Ziggy <laughs> anyway so that's uh, that's uh, that's that's what I do that's my uh, my answer to the effort in zazen question is, you know just somewhere between tension and relaxation and i'm going to do my money speech but uh, after the money speech you can see a special thing i've done for this video only which is a making of the making of my uh, thumbnail that i put up today which i was really proud of and i spent a lot of time working on even though my Photoshop skills are not that great, but I, I, I did something that I think was cool. So I put the making of that right after I will tell you that if you want to help me make efforts, you can send your donations. No, don't send your donations. You can go to the URL you're seeing on the screen, which is hardcorezen.info slash donate. That is hardcorezen.info slash donate. There you will find links to my PayPal and Patreon accounts or whatever you call pages or whatever they are and you can send money there those are my main way of making a living these days pretty much my only source of income most of the time is those is those are those donations so i really appreciate your support but as always this is offered for free so you don't gotta pay if you don't want to pay so i'm gonna go see what ziggy's barking at and we will see you next time have a good time all the time bye Thank you.